Hey guys, this is Chris Monk at Highline Guitars and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. In this episode, I'm going to be covering part four of my Apollyon Six String Floyd Rose guitar build. And what I'm gonna be talking about is the technique I use to level sand, polish, and then buff the guitar. So let's get started. Now in part three, of this build, um, I talked about applying my clear coat finishes to this guitar body. And what I did was I sprayed down a total of, I think it was like eight to 10 coats of Crystal Lax water-based bright tone instrument finish. And typically with water-based finishes, you need to let them cure for five to seven days. Uh, that's what the manufacturers recommend. However, what they're generally talking about is the, the length of time necessary to cure when you've applied like three coats um, on a piece of furniture. But when, when you're spraying guitar bodies, we luthiers have a tendency to put down far more coats. And like I said, I put down like eight to 10 coats on here, so I wanted to make sure I gave it adequate time to cure. And for that reason, I let it cure out for uh, two full weeks. You have to let it fully cure before you begin level sanding. If you don't, there's a good chance you're gonna put some deeper scratches in the finish that are gonna to be tough to buff out later on. So uh, it's a good idea to, like I said, let it fully cure for two weeks. Now all the products that I'm gonna mention that I'm using, I'll put links to those down in the description below. Just click show more and you'll see those links and you can go check them out yourself and. Uh, decide if that's uh, the route you want to go. Now the technique that I'm going to use to level sand this is a dry sanding technique. I stopped wet sanding years ago because abrasive sandpaper technology has improved so much in, in the recent years that you can get great results dry sanding. You don't necessarily have to use a waterproof paper and then water as a lubricant. And the advantage of dry sanding is you can actually see your progress as you're working. With wet sanding, you have to sand and then dry off the surface to see what's going on. But with dry sanding, it tends to go much faster because you can actually see the surface change as you're sanding it. And that's a nice benefit. It, it does speed up the process. Um, another advantage is when you're using a water-based product, it's always advisable to dry sand. Uh, if you're using uh, wet, dry paper, and this is especially true if uh, the finish hasn't cured to 100%, when you start wet sanding, you can reactivate some of the chemicals in the finish and soften it. So it's always better to, to sand dry when you're using a dry sanding product. And that's actually what started me with dry sanding is I had ventured down the road of using uh, water-based products and was, was advised by several manufacturers to use a dry sanding technique. And when I started to do that, I started to realize that dry sanding is so much easier, cleaner, faster, and better than wet sanding. So that's what I do. Now the products that I use, I, I like to break down the sanding process into, into two parts. The first part is the actual level sanding. And I'll do that using 3M's, this is their 216U open coat free cut sandpaper. And you can get this in a lot of different places, but like I said, I'll put a link down below. This is an 800 grit. I believe the sandpaper is available from 80 grit all the way up to 800, 800 being the finest that they offer. And this is the paper that I use to do the initial leveling. And I will level the surface first with the 800. Um, now the key is to start with 800, you really need to make sure that when you put those last coats of the clear on, they lay down as smooth as possible. You don't want any runs or drips. And if there's you know any orange peel, which is hard to avoid, you want it to be as minimal as possible so that it, it readily sands out. Otherwise, uh, you may have to step down to a coarser grit like 600 or even 400 to get it smooth. Um, but I've got this stuff down so smooth I can start with 800 grit. And what I'll do is I'll, is I'll cut it up into small 
rectangles and then I just wrap them around. This is just a cheap pink rubber eraser. These things work great. Um, it's the right size for a guitar body. It's easy to handle. It'll work well with contours like I have here on this carved top. And um, it's just, you know, it'll take maybe three or four of those little rectangles to do an entire guitar body, which is just maybe a quarter sheet of sandpaper. So it doesn't take a lot to do it. Once I have the level sanding done, I'm going to switch to Merca Abrilon sanding pads. And these are the Merca Abrilon pads. Now, typically these are available only in a six inch diameter, but I found a place that sells five inch diameter, which works great with most random orbital sanders and it's easy to, to handhold. I do most of that um, polishing sanding uh, with the Abrilon by hand. I just hand sanded it. It's like kind of like wiping the surface down with a towel. But I'll use 1000 and 2000 grit. I have a 500 here, but I probably won't use that. The 500 grit is actually really nice if you've got a, a really rough surface and you want to start out by using the random orbital sander just to get that initial level. Then you can switch over to the 800 grit and sand out those 500 grit scratches. But I'm going to start with the 800 to get it level and then I'm going to switch to the 1000 grit Merca Abrilon. And what that'll do is it'll remove the 800 grit scratches and replace them with 1000 grit scratches. Then I'll switch to 2000 and that'll replace the 1000 grit scratches with 2000 grit scratches. So the surface is gradually going to get smoother and uh, the scratches are going to disappear. By 2000 grit you can't see the scratches anyways. It's, with the naked eye it's impossible. And then from that point I'll go to the buffing machine and start buffing it and I'll talk more about buffing in a minute. I've already begun sanding the guitar body and I started on the back and I've sanded the lower half of it because I wanted to show you what I'm trying to achieve here. As you can see this, uh, this half of the guitar appears to be lighter and flatter. This side is darker and it's very shiny. What we're trying to do is we're trying to level the surface and the sandpaper will make the surface appear flat and dull and that's okay because as we move through the grits it'll gradually begin to obtain a polish and then when we take it to the buffer we'll get that final high gloss shine. But what happens is as I'm sanding the surface is starting to turn that flat dull sheen but there are also going to be a lot of spots that are dark and shiny and those are what we're looking to remove. We want the entire surface of this to be a consistent flat uh, matte sheen. Then we can move on to the next uh, series of grits. And the technique that I use when I level sand is I will sand in a circular motion. And the reason I do that is because it sands a lot faster and you can actually uh, bring down that sheen quicker and get the surface level faster. Now some people will say, oh, you shouldn't sand in a circular fashion because that'll leave swirl marks. I've never found that to be true and, and I think part of that is because of the method that I use for buffing and I'll explain that uh, when I get to that stage. But for now, it's just a matter of sanding the surface and, and kicking off that glossy sheen and bringing it down to that dull matte sheen. Now, even though this uh, 3M free cut sandpaper is um, advertised as a no load open cut paper, it will still build up some of the residue from sanding on the surface. So I keep a paper towel handy and you'll kind of get a feel for it after a while. You'll start to notice when the sandpaper is starting to clog up a little bit. And you can see some of the residue there and all I have to do is just wipe it off on a paper towel. And that's the nice thing about the 3M sandpaper is, is that it uh, clears out so easily. Now one thing you should be aware of, there are a lot of different uh, no-load sandpapers out on the market these days. And you'll notice that a lot of them are described as a sterate sandpaper. And sterate is a, it's like a powdered soap 
and that is applied to the surface of the sandpaper. And what that does is it lubricates the sandpaper as you're using it and it prevents the residue that you're uh, producing from clogging up the sandpaper. And it works pretty well. The only problem is a lot of folks have noticed that when they use sterate sandpaper, it can react poorly with the clear coats. Now I'm not talking about after you've applied your final clear coats. That happens more when you're sanding in between uh, clear coat applications. So if you're spraying a clear coat, letting it dry, then lightly sanding it before applying the next one. If you use a sterate sandpaper, you're going to have problems with um, adhesion of the product. And that's especially true with water-based finishes. For some reason, when you use a sterate sandpaper, if that surface isn't absolutely spotless clean, if there's any residue from that sterate, you'll get little fish eyes in the finish. And it can be a real pain to deal with those. So. I, I started using this 3M216U uh, because several of the water-based uh, clear coat manufacturers suggested it and I don't see any reason to use any other kind of sandpaper. Um, unfortunately, it only goes to 800 and I sometimes wish that it, it went up to like 1500, but um, I do fine with just the 800. But as you can, I don't know if you can see this on the video, but I've got this dull flat sheen going and I've got a couple of spots throughout the finish that are still glossy so I need to work on those to sand them nice and level so that they the whole surface has that uniform matte sheen. Uh, you'll also notice if you look carefully around these edges I'm not sanding at all and Fortunately, when I applied this clear coat, I was able to put lay it down so smooth that I can wait until I get up into these finer grits of Merca Abrolon to just lightly touch them up. That will help me to avoid sand through. Sand through isn't necessarily fatal, but it is a pain to fix because if you do uh, experience sand through while doing this, what you have to do is you have to get your stain back out and touch up the spot where you sanded through, let that dry, and then build up several coats of the clear to fix it. And that has to cure, so you kind of, you know, it's one of those two steps forward, five steps backward type of things. So, but I'll just keep sanding this way, and I'll do the entire guitar body the same way. And it's, it's really the same process on the front, the back, and the sides. Uh, typically, I will switch to a fresh uh, piece of sandpaper after I finish the back and before I do the sides. And then I'll switch to another one when I do the front. So three or four sheets or little squares of sandpaper is all you need to do a complete level sanding of this surface. And it may seem like it's taking a long time to do this, which it is, but the initial leveling with 800 grit is the most time consuming part of this process. Once you get the surface level with the 800 and you switch to the Merca Aberlon pads, these will just take minutes to do the entire guitar body and to get it um, smooth. And you'll also notice as you're moving up through those Merca grits, if you look at the guitar body at a low angle, you can start to see reflections appearing. And when you go from 800, well, 800, you really won't see that many reflections, but then after 1,000 grit, you'll start to see uh, everything around your guitar reflecting off the surface when you look at it at a low angle. And then after 2,000, it's even more pronounced. So you know you're starting to achieve a polish. But the final polish, will come when I take it to the buffer. And I'll discuss that once we're done here with the level sanding. Now some of the areas of the guitar body like this contoured heel area can be difficult to access with a pink rubber eraser wrapped with sandpaper because it's just, even though it is flexible, it's not flexible enough. And when I try to sand, there's a good chance that I'm gonna sand just the edges and not in that center area. So I need a block 
that's going to conform more easily to this dished out contour shape. So what I found works really well is I cut a block of, it's a memory foam material, about the same, and I cut it to about the same size as my pink eraser so I can use the same size squares. But I'm getting this, I'm cutting this out of, this is a gardener's knee pad that I got at the dollar store. And it's a seasonal item, so it's only available in the spring and the summer. But I'll put a link, uh, it's, I'll see if I can find online where you can order these from. But they're cheap, and I use these for all kinds of things. I can make flexible sanding blocks. I can even use these um, as, um, I can cut small uh, rectangles out and use it to underneath my pickups when I direct mount them to the body. So, but it's pretty easy just to cut these. I'd wrap the sandpaper around it and then it conforms very nicely to that shape so that I can sand it more consistently and much more evenly and not have to worry about overworking a spot and sanding through. Now, to get into these tighter areas here, uh, what I do is I'll take either a wooden dowel or like this piece of PVC, and then I'll just wrap it up into some paper towel, and that'll act as a cushion, and then I can just wrap my sandpaper around that and then sand down into those areas. So, um, whoops. So that is how I get into these hard to reach areas. Okay, some final thoughts on level sanding before I move on to the polish sanding. One thing I try to do is examine the surface very carefully to make sure that I have a really consistent surface. Right now it's um, a very flat matte sheen and it's pretty consistent from end to end and from side to side, all the surfaces. And what I'm looking for are fine scratches that stand out from the rest of the surface. And that can happen during the sanding process, uh, either because the sandpaper got a little too clogged up and dirty and I continued to sand without uh, cleaning off the sandpaper. Uh, it can also happen if you decide to stop using your sanding block and instead hold the sandpaper with your fingers, because whenever you're sanding with uh, holding the sandpaper with your fingers, you're putting a lot more pressure onto the surface and in a very narrow concentrated area and that can uh, be too aggressive and cause deeper scratches. So I'll look for those to see if there are any anywhere on the surface because if, if I don't address them now, later on when I go to buff, I'm going to see these fine scratches and no matter how hard I try, I won't be able to get rid of them. So now is the time to try to get rid of them. It's not fatal, however, if I do get to the, to the buffing stage and I see some of those fine uh, sanding scratches appearing during the, the buffing process, I can just go back in, usually with like the 1000 grit uh, Merca Aberlon pad, and just lightly work that area until that scratch disappears and then rebuff it and I'm good to go. But it's just nice to kind of take care of it now and not have to deal with it later.